In this video, I will present some suggestions on how to present your data clearly. More specifically, how to talk about statistical analysis results in a way that makes it easy to understand and accessible for most audiences. And specifically, how to simplify statistical terminology and statistical jargon so that your audience of varying levels of understanding can understand your results and can interpret them in a way that makes it easy for them to understand. So why even worry about simplifying your statistical language? Um, you may think, well, my audience understands all of these terms because they come from a similar background and have similar interests. But in many, cases, in many cases, that's not always true. So in order for us to be able to make sure people get our message, in other words, understand what our results mean, it is never a bad idea to try and simplify your language to make that more accessible for them. So very often, statistical jargon, as you as you may know, it has its own language. And so this can become a barrier to audience understanding. They're spending a lot of time trying to think about and interpret the terminology and the jargon you're using, and they're not listening to the message you're trying to convey about the results. And again, your audience, as I mentioned, may have varying levels of, of knowledge about statistical terminology as well as statistical analysis. So finding ways to make that more accessible to them, I think, is important. And then lastly, using plain, clear language, I think, leads to a clear message and then hopefully clear understanding. Because if your audience is using a lot of brain power trying to work their way through the jargon and terminology you're using, then they really do have less of a chance of hearing your message and understanding what it is you're trying to convey. So there are a few examples I want to give about some of the more common types of statistical jargon that we use and how we can simplify that and make it in a, and talk about it in a more accessible language. So standard deviation is one of the first. And as we know, standard deviation is a measure of the average variability of a set of scores. That's the, the jargon terminology. That's the, the actual uh, ter uh, definition. But how do we make that more accessible for people to understand? Well, here are some examples of how we can talk about standard deviation in a way that could be more accessible. So we might use an example of standard deviation represents the boundaries of where the middle range of the scores were. In other words, representing what that 68% of the scores in a normal distribution um, are found. Most answers fell in this range. Again, this is referring to that idea that the majority of scores in a normal distribution fall within plus and minus one standard deviation above and below the mean. How spread out, how much above or below something is from the average. So how much variability or dispersion there is um, of scores above and below the mean or the average. Another good way to put this is the majority of subjects, again assuming a normal distribution, the majority of subjects had a score that fell within this range. And then lastly, standard deviation could be represented as the spread of scores around the mean. How far apart the scores are spread from the mean or how closely together packed they are around the mean. So those are again ways you can try and, and simplify without compromising the definition of what standard deviation is. Now the next is confidence intervals. This is a little tougher for many people to understand. And again, confidence intervals are that range of scores in which a population mean or a population uh, parameter may actually fall. So another way to say this, statistically, there's a chance the actual score falls in this range. And again, depending on what type of confidence interval you're using, 90% versus 95%, you can tell them the chance the actual score falls in this range. This represents where the actual answer conceivably could be. So again, we're, we're conveying the idea that we're not exactly sure where the population mean might be, but it's, it's probably somewhere in this range. Now here we can incorporate the idea of the actual probability that the score falls within a certain range by saying we are 95% certain that the population response is within this span or within this range. Now if you're using 90% confidence intervals, you can say I'm 90% sure the true value of a number I'm estimating based upon a sample is within this range in the population. 
Now, statistical significance, again, another one that I think a lot of people think they understand, but being able to convey this in plain language can be very useful for people to really understand what it is statistical significance tells us. Statistically speaking, this difference is significant. Now, defining significant becomes your next issue, being able to explain what significant means, but at least this gives people an idea to understand that this could be an important difference. Our calculations show that this improvement did not just happen by chance, and this, I think, is the really important element for statistical significance that people need to understand. It's really an estimation of how likely an outcome is to have happened due to chance or not due to chance. Now this one's a, a little a little more wordy, but it's it's also very specific in what statistical, statistical significance may be telling us. So the differences in outcomes between group A and group B are likely because of real differences between the groups, presumably because of some kind of an intervention, and not something that happened by chance. Again, we're 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 not 100% likely these differences are real, but we can again qualify that and quantify that for people by talking about p-values and, and probability. Statistical significance shows how likely a pattern in your data is due to chance. And again, that, that's where the p-value and the alpha level can be utilized to explain the likelihood that the data is due to chance. And then lastly, statistical significance indicates whether the outcome of an experiment is the result of a relationship between specific factors, in other words, cause and effect, potentially, or the result of chance. And then lastly, we can talk about margin of error. I think a lot of people kind of understand, I think they understand what this means, but again, statistically, they might not have a good appreciation of, of what this actually represents. And typically, we see this as part of reporting survey data or some kind of polling data uh, is typically where we're going to see this. So margin of error could be explained as our answers could be off by a few percentage points in either direction. So if you have a margin of error of plus or minus 3%, then the proportion of people that answered a certain way could be off by 3% either direction. And then secondly, you could also say the actual responses may be higher or lower by this amount, the margin of error, 3% or 5%, whatever your margin of error may be. So those are some examples of how you can take a statistical term or jargon and simplify it in a way that, that people can understand and can appreciate. And then that way they're not having to work their way through, okay, what does margin of error mean? Because when you present that in plain language, people can understand that very quickly and then they can use their, their brain power and their thinking resources to actually think about the message you're trying to convey so they won't get lost in the, uh, the forest of statistical jargon. So hopefully you found this useful and hopefully this is something you can work on. Um, certainly there are more than the ways that I presented to explain some of these things, but what you want to make sure you're doing is, is not compromising the, the definition of, of the term but finding a way to explain that in plain language. So again, hopefully you found this useful, and good luck using this in your own presentation.